You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May. Hey, everybody out there in podcast land. Welcome to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. And so I have a exciting show today with you, and we're going to talk about how to build wealth through land investing. And so I have the uh, co-host of Casual Friday's REI podcast, Mr. Adam Southie and Mr. Justin Saliva. So let me let me tell you a little about them before I bring them on. So raw land investing experts Adam and Justin know exactly how their new investors struggle. They've, they've each had massive success in their own businesses. Today, they're on a mission to help others learn how to harness, harness the enormous potential offered by land investments. Who knew? And uh, the incredible RRI, the massive cash profits, sustained passive income. And after helping others, uh, hundreds of other land investors find and sell amazing properties at unbelievable profits, Adam and Justin are collaborating, collaborating, collaborated in creating powerful resources to support both new and seasoned land investors along their journey. They launched the Casual Fridays REI podcast and built a comprehensive course that would not only answer all the questions they received, from uh, consulting clients, but they've also incorporated the best of their own combined experiences to as very one. And Adam and Justin are here today uh, to show our listeners there's more than one way to achieve success when it comes to raw and investing. Adam and Justin, welcome to the Practical Wealth Show. Hey, thanks for having us. Hey, thanks, Curtis. We appreciate you having us on. So today on our show, guys, this falls under, you know, we call our thing the money for life process. So it's get money, bank it, borrow it, spend it, repay it. So today we're talking about another way to get money, to generate cash flow. So tell us, tell them what I didn't tell you. And, you know, how did you discover this? And then let's get into giving some some strategies. Yeah. So me and Adam have been best friends for 20 plus years. We've owned a couple different businesses together and everybody likes the side hustle mentality. Like, Hey, I want to do this and I want to increase my wealth, get the time, live on the beach, do all this stuff, buy the Lambos and the Rollies. So we did the Amazon thing. And Adam's been a real estate guy for a long time. I'll let him go into details on that. I had bought and sold some houses with corporate flipping for a fortune 100 company I worked for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had an Amazon company together and we had three number one products and he comes to me and says, Hey, I want to liquidate our Amazon business and start doing real estate again. And I was like, cool, man, this will be exciting. We're going to do real estate together. And he's like, no, we're not going to do it together. I'm doing it by myself. But if you want to do it, you can do it too. And so we both launched our own real estate companies at that time. We started buying raw, uh, raw land. I want to jump in there real quick because I before you saw how he's jumped, talked real fast. <laughs> right, right, right. He didn't want me to step in and say, in a few minutes, Justin's going to lie to you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so that, that's not exactly how it went down. The way I remember it. That, that he does like to tell that story all the time. Like it's been close to four years now and I hear it monthly. It's like, well, it's like he's never going to let go. <laughs> but but yeah, we did have an Amazon business together. I've been in real estate for close to 15 years. You know, I've done everything, realtor, flip houses, wholesale, you name it. And we did have an Amazon business together. I came across this land flipping niche and I heard someone saying that they could buy land for a couple hundred bucks and sell it for a thousand dollars. And I was instantly hooked. And and so I tried it. And I my very first deal ever, I bought three two and a half acre parcels for two hundred and fifty bucks a piece and I sold them all for a thousand bucks a piece. And he saw me do this. And so now he's hooked too. So we both just kind of jump in it, separate businesses. But yeah, we've been at it for now for almost close to four years now. Going on four years, yeah. And it's been crazy. So everybody boasts numbers and talks about that. I can tell you my company alone with off market properties, the way we buy, we've generated over five million in equity alone in just in that four years of buying these properties. So learning a niche becoming, you know, pseudo experts in it and then honing our, honing our abilities. And, you know, and we put that out in a course and through our podcast, we have that out there. So we, we share that, that knowledge. So other new investors don't hit those same roadblocks and those bumps in the road. How did you go from real estate to raw land? Cause I remember I used to hear, Oh, you know, land, you can't cash flow land, never buy raw land. I remember her early on, you know, it was crawling sheets, things. And, you know, back in the day, how, you know, how did you get, raw land and pay that I could generate cash flow with raw land. Well, for me, it was pretty simple as I was broke at the time and I heard you could buy land for really cheap. And I think a lot of people can re- really relate to that because not everyone has 20, 30, 40, a hundred thousand dollars in the yep. bank. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
if you want to flip a house, you either go get like a hard money loan or a partner, or you got to have that kind of cash. And well, with land, I didn't need that. You know, you don't need that. And then someone, you know, I heard that you could buy this. You know, you buy it for a couple hundred bucks, and then you take a couple hundred bucks as a down payment, and you collect payments on it monthly, build that cash flow. When I heard all that, that's that was all I needed to hear to get into this industry, or at least to try it out and see if it worked. Right. Yeah. And and watching, you know, the first marketing material that he sent out. I was a general manager for a small railroad. I was a director level at a Fortune 100 railroad and went to a small one. So running a business is, you know, something I I did daily and was in a high level position. And then seeing him buy five acres for 500 bucks, I was like, I will take all the five acres you can for 500 bucks and I would just keep buying them, right? And knowing that they're worth way more than that. And then we started down that path and we realized that we kept running into issues. You couldn't fund the business to keep it moving. So we we started to decide, okay, what profit margin do we need to make on this? And how much money do we need to keep churning and keep doing it? So we kind of grew our businesses from that mindset and said, what we call, we talk about a bass boat property. Um, it's a property that's cost about the same as, as a motor home, a Harley Davidson, a bass boat. It's at that thirty forty thousand dollars $40,000 piece of property that we're buying at about a third. And every time we do one of those deals, we're making 20 grand. And so if you had a a business where your product's costing you 10 to 15,000 and you're selling it for 30 to 35,000 every time and you're doing one or two of those a month, your life is totally different. Absolutely. And so we honed our business skill into that. And, you know, we talk cash flow and positive, you know, that passive income, that kind of property, somebody may have the eight to 10,000 down to put down on it. And then you set that note up for 10 years and a payment's 250, 300 bucks a month. You've got 10% interest attached, you got a service charge. And so you've created a passive income from you, taking all the risk out, but you're not dealing with junk. I don't want to call it junk property, but that junk quarter acre in the middle of nowhere, you're dealing with something that you really can sell the dream on. And that's what we look to do. Let's let's get to that point because you have a saying that you think that um, (laughs) why uh, driving for dollars and rehabbing is a waste of time. So what are like some tips that you have to get started with uh, land investment? Because I think, I, you you know, why it's a low cost of acquisition, high potential markup business. That's the why, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, so now how would somebody get started? What was the three things you'd have people do to maybe get started with that? So I, th- I think that what kind of what you said is a couple different things. Like why driving for dollars is a waste of time. Um, the way that we market our business, the way that we find deals is all through mail. And it's specifically, it's blind offers. I mean, we will pick an area, we'll do some research, and then we will literally mail every single person in that area that owns a piece of land and we'll make them an offer sight unseen. And it's typically about 30% of what we perceive as a market value. Mm-hmm. And so... By mailing everyone, you're taking out all the time and effort it takes of driving around and looking for stuff. It take, And because it's a blind offer, you're taking out negotiations. People know what you're going to pay up front. And you've hit everyone. You don't care if it's a back tax property. You don't care really what the situation is. Because they could just have a piece of land that they just want to get rid of. Yeah, the, right. so, yeah, the idea is we're putting a cash offer in front of somebody that has a piece of land that hasn't been improved. And it hasn't been improved forever. So... Typically, they don't have an emotional attachment to it. If they do, you know, it's the people that live real close to it and they may actually use the land. But if you see an out-of-state owner who who has a piece of property that hasn't ever been improved and you send them a cash offer, you're helping solve a situation for them. A perfect example is I had a property in Oklahoma. I sent a guy an offer on it. He calls me back and says, heck yeah, I want to sell it. And I offered him 15 grand for it, 40 acres. He said, yeah, I need a new camera. I'm a photographer. I have a business. My dad bought that in the 70s. He left it to me when he passed away. This this will help me take my wife on a vacation, buy a new camera to run my business. I buy it for 15 grand and sell it within a week for $70,000. Wow. Take take $12,000 down, $700 a month with 10% interest attached to it for the next while. And so now you have this note that's created. Almost all your risk is out. And now my wife's car's payment's made by that note. And I don't have to worry about it for the next. That's how you do the cash flow. So you buy it and then you sell to somebody else on time. On terms. Yeah. On terms. Right. Yeah. But never, I, I'm of the mindset and Adam is as well. We don't turn down cash offers on stuff. If it's going to be a hundred percent return on investment inside of a week, we take the money and we run Absolutely. and we go to the next deal and you keep churning it. And our thought process is for every dollar we can put out, we get three back. So keep as many dollars against it as you can. Because there's a lot of people, it's just, you know, 
there's to your point, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. And mm-hmm. so it's hard to come up. Not hard. It depends, you know, to because even if you do the driving for dollars, which see and so I always tell people it all starts with marketing, right? Mm-hmm. So your basically your foundation of it is what I call direct response marketing, mail, mm-hmm. and then you only talk to the people that are interested because they called yep. you. So it's that's a different dynamic right there. And then it's like, okay. You don't have to necessarily come up with 20% down or finding hard money and all that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. for land. So I, I do think that that, that that's is the... Uh, that's the great thing here, too, is it can be done at any price range. Like Justin just said, you buy a property for 10000 you take an eight to $10,000 down payment. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's what you can work up to. But when you're first right. getting started, you can start with the lower end properties, too. Like I told you when we first got started, I bought three two and a half acre parcels for 250 bucks a piece. Right. Well, I sold two of those for $1,000 cash. But the other one, uh, the last one, I took $200 down as a down payment and financed it at 100 bucks a month. Wow. So, See, that's all. So now those are my, my infinite bankers out there. So this could be... Uh, a loan against your banking system to acquire that asset and then you pay yourself back with interest and when you get the money back, you pay your loans back out and you wash, rinse, and repeat. So yeah. you've got money in motion. You know, you yep. have to create velocity. You don't just it's, leave money sit. You can't accumulate your way to wealth. You're preaching our you're preaching for us right now. Velocity of money right. is something yeah. we talk about. <laughs> is 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 one of the things that's key for us. And you know, you you hit a point there. I want I want to hit two things that you said. Mm-hmm. You said you know, driving for dollars is a way for somebody to go out there. What are they doing when they're driving for dollars? They're looking for a property that they can put on their list and they can make an offer or get a hold of the owner. What we're doing when we mail, we, we're doing the exact same thing. We've just created our own list. Yes. We have access when, through our course when we teach it. We provide access for people to have the database of every tax assessor and county tax assessors. Uh, database. And so if you say, Hey, I want between 10 acres and 50 acres and, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, you can go down to that. You could go to the subdivision. You can draw on a map and say, I want every vacant piece of property in this circle that the person doesn't live here. They live in another state and you can have that list in seconds for five, 10 cents a line of data. So Mm -hmm. when you go in the second part to that, when you said you drive for dollars, what do you normally do when you go driving for dollars? You stop at 7-Eleven, you get a right. Coke, you get a cup of coffee. We've even put together a book. It's called Coffee Money Real Estate Investing. And you, for the price of your coffee over the course of a month, you can buy three properties online and 10X that with no problem. We have a way to show you that we show you to buy land from the, straight from the state of Arkansas, where you can literally go buy a piece of land for 50 to 100 bucks. Wow. Anybody can go do that three times a month instead of spending the gas money, spending what they would on coffee while driving around. Mm-hmm. You sell that stuff on eBay, you sell it to the neighbor, you do whatever, and you make 10 times your money on it. It can't be that. And it's like people always say, well, I want a home based business or I want, you know, I want to be home with my kids. And so what I hear is um, you automate some stuff, you can, you know, the mail, the Post office is doing a lot of your legwork for you. You can do it. You can create a schedule for when you do this. Yep. And you can do it part time. Like, you know, yep. I would tell people wages make you a living, profits make you a fortune. So you work on your living by day and you work on your profits at night and on the weekend. That's Jim Rohn. It's not Curtis. But, you know, and that's, this sounds like it, it's, that's a perfect marriage of yep. that philosophy. Yeah. And that's, and kind of the thing that comes to that. And you said, you know, doing this full time. When I was at that job, I got the dreaded Friday morning, 630 call. Hey, come by HR on your, on your way into the office. So get the call, me and my boss, we part ways. And so I'm sitting there with a business that had been running about four months and I have the option. Do I go back into the corporate world and keep the grind going? Or do I really see what I can do and scale and make this business work? Mm-hmm. And so by doing that, it forced me to say, Hey, what working and what we were taught and what was missing. And we missed a lot of stuff right off the bat. It just, there were some details, some holes. We filled those holes it just started making it churn from there. So once we increased that, we were able to scale our businesses to a point where we launched several of the different companies that were of the land niche to help people in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not to mention this gets easier as you scale up mm-hmm. because like the bass boat properties that we're talking about. So you're mailing for them, but at that price range, you probably got somebody answering the phone for you. Like we have a service pat live. They answer the phone calls for us. Mm-hmm. We decide to buy, send it to a title company because mm-hmm. there's enough spread there. So the title company can close it for you. Then you mm-hmm. hand it over to a realtor. The realtor mm-hmm. sells it. Then it goes back to a title company. All you're doing is just signing, collecting money. Sign, collect the checks. 
I like that model a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that he's always speaking my language. So what would you say? So let's talk about the uh, let's break it down. So what are the seven easy steps to land flipping wizardry? Well, first is the uh, you got to know where to send mail to. Right. Mm-hmm. First step is picking an area and pricing a county. We say we target an area. We, we top, target an asset class. And we call that the Bass Boat property. So we say, hey, what's the market value if it's if it's thirty to forty five thousand dollars? Is where we want to sell the property at, and we know we're going to offer a percentage of that. We go find what's on the market for thirty to forty five thousand dollars using the resources out there and the in the the platforms that are already there, the free data that's out there, and say, okay, hey, what's selling for thirty to forty five thousand dollars in this state? And then we go to the county level and say, okay, hey, these counties are doing that, and then we price that county individually and say, okay, hey, the average of this price is eleven $1, hundred and thirteen dollars an acre. We're going to offer them a third of that. So we're in it at, you know, 350 bucks an acre. And that's what we'll send our offers out on. We send it to everybody that has that size property that we want that's in that, that price range. And we get those in. And like Adam said earlier, we go to the title company and have them run the due diligence and everything and go from there. We have a few checks we do before we send it to them, but mm-hmm. it's not much. Yeah, hmm. exactly. is, there, is there any, there's no, uh, so these are just pure raw land. There's no, uh, no, no structures on these, on these sites. No, I mean, sometimes you, you get back, like I've bought stuff with a mobile home on it, bought stuff with a house, uh, but typically we shop for raw land, raw vacant land, okay. because we don't want to have to deal with the tenants and, and do all that rigmarole. Right. We do know how to buy and sell houses. Like he said, he's wholesaled and been a realtor. I've last year, I think I wholesaled and flipped 25 houses too, but raw land is, is so much easier. I can do it from my computer. I don't have to go put my hands on it, get a mm-hmm. GC in place, do all that. I can do this from anywhere move into marketing, right? You got to do like the blind offers that we were talking about. And so after we've taught you, or after you learn how to pick and price, pick and price a county, you got to get the, you got to start marketing, right? You got to know how to mail them. And we've, we've back, uh, set some things up. So we have some connections with some um, mailers that actually get it done. Cheapest that we know of out there. Mm-hmm. They'll mail these letters for you and it hits everyone out there. And that, that gets the phones ringing. That gets people's interest. That gets everyone calling. Yeah, we have it set up now, our relationship with them, that we are cheaper than a stamp to have them put our letter, our offer, our contract in there, fold it, mail it, and get it to them. And they track exactly where it's at and when it's hitting for less wow. than the cost of a stamp right now. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so if any, of your, if any of your clients do direct mail, we use Rocket Print and Mail. They're out of Florida. Just tell them Casual Friday sent you and they'll get you set up. Yeah, so guys, if you're a business owner listening to this, I mean, see, what you got to do is... You could probably take these seven steps and apply it to your business. I got a feeling, you know, what any business, but this is where we're applying this to this model. But so I always want you to hear, and if you don't want to do this, what principles can I apply to what I'm doing? This yep. is, is so what I want you to hear. Keep going. That's great. So. Um, then you got due diligence. So due diligence mm-hmm. is next, right? So we own land in 35 plus states. Yeah. Combined. yeah. And we've never, we've probably been to maybe three, four or 5% of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea is that you never have to go to this land. So we've set up ways that we do due diligence online. So there's parcel maps or software out there that you can see land, your land without, from your computer without ever having to go to it. Mm -hmm. And we make a lot of our decisions based on that. Um, looking for good access, you know, can you actually get to it? You'll be surprised how much land is out there that there's physically no way to get to it. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the biggest things for us. It's the biggest, one of the biggest deal breakers I see as a private funder is the, the road access isn't there. It's not legal. It's not physical. It's, it's a combination of both. And so you're like, well, we need to make sure you can get it. Cause if you buy a property, you send somebody who wants to buy it from you out there, they're going to want to get on their property. And so we right. ensure that it, that access is easy to get on. It's usable, it's legal, and they're not going to get shot while they're trying to go out there because you know, you're in rural right. land. It's not right, right, like right. It's, it's like coming up next to your neighbors and like, Hey, you can't be on that lot. Right. No, you're out in, you're in the middle of some in right. middle of nowhere. And that reminds me of a funny story. I went to a property I had bought and it had, it's a fourth generation property. Um, the neighbors had been leasing is 135 acres. And I pulled up and I knew the neighbor had been paying the taxes as the lease. And mm-hmm. this is one of the few properties we've ever went and looked at. So I went and knocked on his door and all he sees is a guy that looks kind of like a fullback walking up to his door he pulls a gun on me and goes, I don't know what you want here. Cause I don't know who you are. Right. Right. Like, whoa, whoa, my gun's in the car. Do I need to go get it? Or can we talk? And he's like, he's like, Oh, I'll go, uh, and gets nervous and sets his gun down. But then we have a conversation. His son ended up actually buying the property from me and mm-hmm. it was like a $75,000 profit deal. And wow. just because went out there and talked to him and went and looked at the property a little bit. 
So I can see you. Yeah, it's like what's that movie? I was a Gator or like the Beverly Hills. Like, did you see Revenue Officer or Dukes of Hazard? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then you know, after the the due diligence, they're making so well, you find my still. No. It's yeah. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the and so with the due diligence access is huge. The topography to make sure the property is actually usable. Mm-hmm. for what you're going to intend to use it for. So the Bass Boat property is selling the dream. If I tell you, hey, if you thought about the piece of raw land that you were going to actually own and have, what do, you, what do you picture? You picture trees, you picture your cabin, you picture the kids running around, you picture making a fire pit, maybe hunt if you're into that. If you're not, you know, you're going out there and you're enjoying nature, you're getting to unplug for a little bit and you're getting to relax. And that's what we look for when we buy. We want that recreational piece of property that has that, that use. Now, if it's a side of a mountain, you don't want that unless you're a rock climber or you're mm-hmm. using it for a movie or something. But for most part, we, we want to make sure the end user is actually going to use it for what it looks like. And if it's a lot that you're going to build on, we want to make sure it's actually buildable. Mm, that makes sense. Part of okay. the due diligence there. That's part of due diligence that you're doing yep. before yeah, so, you buy it. Yeah. yeah. So real okay. quick, how that works is we put it in our parcel software. It pulls it up. It gives us the parcel outline. We look for a road to it. Then we take the Latin longitude, drop it in like Google, Google Earth. Mm-hmm. and or Google Maps. And now we see it, Google Earth 3D, kick it sideways. And you can see if you're a side of a mountain or if you got hills, valleys, you can actually check the measurements on it to see what the elevation is, wow. what it is per hundred feet if you want. You know, So you can get into that stuff and actually look a little bit more in depth with the free tools that are out there. So we're not selling you a bunch of CRMs and programs. We're saying, hey, these are the free tools. You can utilize these to do this business virtually. Wow. So you said that's the magic word right there, virtually. <laughs> free. And, <laughs> and free and virtual, two magic free words. And virtual. Right. <laughs> we mm-hmm. look at like a flood checker or a, a, like a wetlands checker to make sure it's not floodland and it's not wetlands and you can actually use it from there. So super simple there. Then we go back and comp it and make sure it's actually has the value there. And that's the crazy thing about real estate. And I'm sure you'll, you'll agree with this is real estate. You can become a millionaire really quick by buying a piece of property for cash. That's worth a million bucks. So it's just for our numbers, numbers uh, that we've used, if we bought a million dollar piece of property for 300 grand, you just created $700,000 in equity. Yeah. And now you're a millionaire for 300 grand. Right. And that's the cool thing about this is that so quickly you can add equity to your, your portfolio or to your, to your brand, if you will, you know, just an ink or whatever, by just doing this, by buying undervalued assets and, and putting them in, in holding. And then you realize that when you sell them, whether it's a note or you sell it as a note or you sell it for cash, you're realizing what that actual value is. Check, flood checks and comps is still falls under due diligence. That's part of the due diligence. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those quick checks. And then from there, we'll check the deed, the original deed that the person has. And you can see a ton of information in deeds. And that's really, that's the cool thing to me because that's the paper that actually controls what, who owns the property. Mm-hmm. And so for me, when I talk about land, I think about we're, what we really do is we trade paper. So mm-hmm. we're buying a deed from somebody and we're going to put in our name and we're going to send that deed to somebody else. So somebody's asking me like on, the coffee money method. Like, what are you doing? Well, I buy 10 or 15 from the state. I put them out every four days on eBay. And then I'm trading that paper with somebody else. So I'm using the knowledge I have to bring something off market onto market and using and, and turning it quickly for that velocity of money and making a profit there. And so that's why it. we do what we do. I was just leaving. Uh, I was, we were talking about for a recorder. I was running behind because I was teaching a class and uh, it was at like a technical institute. And I says, listen, your number one asset is you. And mm-hmm. you have to, if you're going to grow your revenue, what grows revenue is you got to invest your mindset, your skill set, and your network. And so this skill set has allowed them to literally print money. Yeah. You know, you're that's, exactly right. And that's, yeah. for me, like I think about, you know, being in that job in that corporate environment and losing it. And now I'm like, I had money saved because I had a pretty good career and I've always done well. We've always invested in stuff and always tried making the money work for us. but now this is a skill that nobody could ever take away from me. Right. Nobody, right. nobody could say I could, I could make, I couldn't really mess up now and make a bad deal and lose everything because it's so diversified with so many different properties. Right. But the idea of if I needed to start from zero again tomorrow, I could and know exactly how to do it all the way through the, the blueprint we've laid out in our course. And it's actually called land flipping blueprint, but we have a roadmap to do it exactly again. And we could do it over and over and over, do it anywhere in the world. Uh, using the land in the United States. And see, so security is the ability to produce, right? So mm-hmm. once you know something, like I've heard Andrew Carnegie say, if you took all of my businesses, all of my property, but if I still had my faculties, 
And, you know, my, let's say his, I think he says leadership team, I could build it all again in half the time. Know what I know now. Oh yeah. So that is a great, you know, in America, you know, one of the reasons this works is because there's a book called the mystery of capital. Right. And it says that America has really detailed proper private property law. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the ability to be able to own land, get title to it and sell it is one of the keys of why our country is great, you know, mm-hmm. and, and capitalism work because you can own private property where a lot of places you can't do that. He said in this country, because mm-hmm. there's other countries, you can't own land. And so if yep. you can't own land, you can't create equity. You can't refinance it and turn equity into capital, you know, into money. And so that's, that's a, you know, you said a lot there, <laughs> you know, yeah. if you unpack that, that's a, that's a yeah. big deal. Yeah. We teach two different ways to do this. We teach someone that you can self close these deals where you hire a notary, you go through all the due diligence we just talked about, you make sure that everything's good and we teach people how to close it themselves. But we also recommend on these, especially as it's more expensive ones, we show people how to go through title and really take a lot of that weight off your shoulders and have the professionals really do it themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the things, you, everybody likes the buzzword automation and, and I have this system in this platform and automating. A lot of that is just leveraging the professionals in that, in that field. So yeah. if we talk a title company, they are experts in closing properties for you. They have an attorney back behind them, whether it's right. a title agent or it's an attorney close. Uh, there's an attorney back there that's, they have their boilerplates. So everything's in place. They have their checks. Then they have somebody else writing an insurance policy against it for you. Right. It cost right. you, you know, a 1%. So if like a $15,000 property cost me 150 bucks on an insurance policy, it's cheap insurance right. to insure marketable title from now and for forever ago. Right. Right. So exactly. it, it works out. But the good thing is I don't have to manage the notary. I don't have to manage the payment. It's getting there, having to manage recording the deed. And if there's a mess up on the deed, have to fix the deed, let the professional do it. And it doesn't cost me too much money. You just hand it over to them. When you're selling it on terms, is mm-hmm. how are you making sure, how is the payment happening? So we do it on a land contract and a promissory note. Mm-hmm. And then the payments are set up on an automatic payment. So we use a, like a, we use an ACH. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the land will actually stay in our company's name until it's paid off. And so that way there's no foreclosure process to go through. We do have a bunch of set things that we do to make sure that if it ever went to court, like we've tried our very best to work a deal out with someone. Mm-hmm. But if you work on these like higher end properties, like a bass boat property, and you take five, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 down. It's very hard for someone to walk away from that and foreclose on it. Mm-hmm. Right. But we, um, the idea is that it's an ACH payment. The land stays in our company's name until it's paid off. And then we'll deed it to them at the end. Yeah. And in some situations, that's when you use the land contract. Some situations, some people don't want to use a land contract. We'll run it through title and do a deed of trust or a mortgage for them, but at their expense, you know, so it's a little bit more cumbersome for us because there's a foreclosure process at that point, uh, different than what our land contract is, but we do use that in some higher end properties. I mean, it's kind of depends. Our plan is land contract and promise Mm -hmm. like Adam explained. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But we do have those abilities as well. So there's other solutions. And then if they're working with you all, you can kind of, yep. they need to know that you can kind of help them sort it out. Yeah. 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 Try and let everyone know what's going to happen up front. You know, our con- my, our contracts have the legal jargon, but it's also in English too. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. you don't pay me for 30 days, I'm going to send you a nasty letter. And if you don't pay me 30 days after that, I'm just going to cancel your contract and we're going to resell it. Mm-hmm. Right? But if, if, they're, if they feel more comfortable and they want to pay for it, we can always set up through the title company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as you let them know. I mean, then you've told them. Everybody's adults. So, you know, this is business. It's not personal. One of the great and, things uh, about the land industry is that there's so many people that are into like automation. And so there seems to be a tool for everything. And so we have stuff set up that uh, just ACH is the account for you. It gives them their own dad, you know, their dashboard. We have a dashboard and you just manage it from there. Yeah. And, that's, mm-hmm. and he says for the land company, land niche, but it's really mostly some of these other niches and it just kind of gets used for the different asset class. So mm-hmm. whether it's a, ser- a note servicing company, whether it's a house being a mortgage or it's a land, it doesn't matter. It's just a different asset using the same tools that are out there. You know, mm-hmm. oil and gas, they go out and they have to look at lines, property lines, hunters look at property lines. We can leverage those technologies and use them in this niche. And it, it allows for us to have the best of both worlds, if you, if you will. What would you say is some of your, uh, maybe a favorite deal or deal of uh, uh, one of your students in doing this just so people can know the work that's entails, but what's the reward on the back end if you feel committed yeah. to learning the skill? So the, there, I could go on for days on success stories from our clients. One of the ones that really stands out to me, because I think it's going to resonate with your audience a little bit more, 
is about a year and a half ago, I met a couple at a live event and they were getting some advice from somebody and I just overheard it. And I was like, eh, that's, nah, I wouldn't, yeah, it's going to cost them a bunch of money. So I'm I said, Hey, there. call me on Monday. Let's sit down and let's talk about it. Let's walk through what they told you and what we did. So this couple, they're both successful in their own businesses. One owns a yoga studio, one owns a long-term healthcare company. He has a book of business, makes a couple hundred thousand bucks a year on it. And he's good. Um, he owns 25 rent houses. So real estate's not new to him. Mm-hmm. And he has a commercial building. His niche, land niche is new to him. So he goes over the last 10 months, he puts a transaction coordinator in, which was worked for one of my companies and we trained her and they had, they've made over six figures and he's done it. All he has to do is send the mail out and he decides whether he wants to buy it and she does everything else for him. Wow. And he's made over six figures and he didn't even realize how much money he's made. So they were talking in a meeting. She goes, yeah, we've had a super successful year and you can hear more on it. We had her on our show uh, last week. So it'd be November, beginning of November. And she talks about it. But her, she started with me in last Thanksgiving. So this year alone, she has been a part of over 100 deals wow. that she has managed as this. And so in her first year, you know, what she will tell you is it doesn't have to be perfect. Take action and get started and stumble through this. It's not life or death. It's you can do this and leverage your risk. And as long as you follow the blueprint that's out there, you can become successful and, and see success. Wow, that's awesome. So I think the final question I want to have is, because I, I wanted to, to bring this out, because I'm actually not sure what it means. It's, you, you say it's crucial to have a 360-degree awareness of the industry. What does that mean? And, and what resources that help you do that? A 360-degree view of the industry. As any industry grows and more people get involved in it, you start to see the good and bad of niches and things like that. Mm-hmm. When we first got started into it, there wasn't a lot of action going on in land. There was a, there were some few people and I used to tell people, Oh yeah, there's about a thousand people that are actively doing this. You could go to any REI meetup and ask for a land investor and you wouldn't meet no, another land investor. Mm-hmm. You might meet somebody that develops a lot or, you know, builds new houses, but you never met somebody that just traded raw land. And what we hit going through that, you know, we talk about, well, yeah, just use private money guy or, Hey, use this. And you just don't know those people in the, in the business. And so when we stepped in, we said, Hey, let's look around. Let's figure out what we had problems with. You know, some of us, our finances might be a little bit stronger than others going into this niche. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the person that just wants to get started and doesn't have much to get going. So we've taken that with our program and what we do with our podcast and looked at every angle that somebody's going to get tripped up or hung up and put that in place for them. And, and a fix for that, whether it's buying property for 50 bucks and trading it on online and you're doing it on Sundays when the kids are at soccer practice or, you know, going in and doing the bass boat properties. And we hit one of our clients just did his first deal is one point is a first seven figure deal. He's done $1.7 million. He bought it. He subdivided it down. And now it's going to be, it's estimated to bring back about 3.9 million is what they've wow. got figured after clearing everything. He just sold one of his four, his first properties off of it with a hundred percent markup, um, you know, and a subdivide. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so, you know, the gamut of the seven figure deals down to the fifty dollar deals, that three sixty look and what that looks like for for a person and how to normalize it and make it real for the everyday investor. You know, that's that's what we mean by that. Got it. What? So, how can they, um, guys? Uh, uh, What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? I know you have a way where you teach this and also know you have a, a, a great uh, podcast you've been doing for a couple of years. Tell, tell them about that. Yeah. So we have a podcast called Casual Fridays REI. And that's pretty much the best way to get in touch with us. The website, Casual Fridays REI, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. There's plenty of ways to get in touch with us on that stuff. But the podcast just really has uh, detailed our journey. So we just didn't want it to be completely educational the whole time. It's we share our successes, we share our failures, what's working for us, what doesn't. We are podcasters, but we're also active investors and we maintain that. That way we always have something to share with, with people. And mm-hmm. uh, we know we have the course, we have the book, it's all on there. Um, but yeah, that's it. Three days a week, Couch Fridays REI. Yeah, that's, you know, like you said, the social media platforms are great. Um, one of the things we have for your listeners is coffeemoneyrei.com. I'm going to say that again, coffeemoneyrei.com is an ebook for $7.99. It teaches you how to use your coffee money over the course of the month to buy three properties and turn that into a little bit of profit for you. Um, it's crazy to think when we launched that book in April, May, um, the turnout, I thought, oh yeah, you know, a couple people bought it, you know, they're going to buy a couple properties. We've had guys buy 300 plus properties 
doing this. Uh, wow. it, it surprised us. We had uh, a mom who lost her job as a speech pathologist and she had like 15 or 20 properties in, in inventory, sold those and covered her pay while she was, wasn't getting work because she had this, this stuff she bought for 50 bucks, 75 bucks. So she bought a thousand dollars worth of property and it covered her bills, what her salary was until she got her new job as a speech pathologist. Oh my God. That's and fantastic. So that we yes. talk about freedom and stuff like that, but we have it on there for your listeners for seven ninety nine. It's super cheap book, 21 pages, easy read. And then our course that we have out there, land flipping blueprint is 40 plus videos, six hours of laying out every angle that you could possibly need. And it's, uh, it's crazy. Cause we started originally consulting when we put out the blueprint, our consulting business just dropped because people had our business just laid out right, like, right, just right. The videos over and over and over. And so it was, it's crazy to me to see that and see the success now of some of our clients and how, how much they've done. It's awesome. So if you want a way to make money, you know, to get some new to everybody talks about, Oh, I want multiple streams of income. Well, just got another one. Okay. Yep. That you could start for $50, you know, <laughs> not start, but you know, you could acquire something. It's probably, yeah. it still deals out there where you can find that kind of stuff, but yeah. you got to know how to do them. But you have the ability to learn a skill that will allow you to eat and allow you to scale and still have a life. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. Yep. Okay. And, um, uh, and if you're a realtor or, you know, you're in financial services like I am, I'm hearing a business that I could do that won't distract me from my main business. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so get the book. That's just your homework. OK, <laughs> go get the book. They were, have a generous offer for you. So go pick up the book. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I got to read a book a month on money on money anyway. So here's your book for November. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, Adam, Justin, is any, any uh, Anything I didn't ask you, do you think that I should ask you that you want to tell me? I don't know if you didn't ask anything. I did. I, no, I, no, I think it's, it's what you're doing is, is great here, Curtis. You know, teaching people practical wealth is, is a huge eye opener for a lot of people because they're not taught that by their parents in a lot of situations. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it's huge what you're doing for your community. The idea that we drive by vacant land every day on the freeway, on the highway, we see yes. it we don't realize that value that it's there in the wealth it can create for you. You know, the, if you look at the, the wealthiest people in history, they've all owned a ton of land. It wasn't about the apartments or the cash flow or the storage buildings. It's, it's they own dirt. And yeah. whether you take the model of a, you know, tote the note car salesman and he's getting these great returns and reselling them and stuff, it's kind of like the dirt, but they can't drive it off and they can't hide it from you in a garage. Right. So the wealth that you can create from land is, has been one of the, I most eye-opening businesses that we've either done, both of us have done together, but it's crazy to think that something just sitting out there, you can trade this paper, the deeds from your name to their name and, and see the kind of markups that we see. Yeah, guys, listen, it's what the world's full of people, ideas, and money. Yep. Okay. And a good idea doesn't care who has it. And so folks, you just got a great idea. And so now it's up to you to take action, follow up and go out there and make, you know, it's already November now. So I'm going to go out there and, you know, learn something this quarter and then make 2020 your best year ever. Listen, this has been awesome, folks. Y'all learn a lot. Again, Curtis has a, I did not see him. I'm not doing the video, but I have a page of notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, guys, thank you for um, uh, being on the Practical Wealth Show and dropping, you know, these, what I call, as a, uh, what's the name? JLD would say value bombs all over the place. I uh, appreciate you. And uh, go out there and and everybody and make it a profitable day. Thanks for listening to the uh, Practical Wealth Show. Great. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.